four years back, when I was an undergraduate student at University of California, Berkeley, I visited rural India on a project. This village that I visited was pretty close to my hometown in Jaipur. It had about 80 families, no access to roads, hospitals, or electricity. But guess what? Every single household in the village had access to two cell phones on average. Now, when they didn't have power, how are they charging these cell phones? There was actually this 15-year-old kid in the village who would collect these cell phones twice a week, and he would go to the nearby town, he would get them charged, and he would return it to their owners for a fee. Now, I wouldn't trust a 15-year-old with that, but these villagers did, because they valued a charged cell phone that much. So it was clear to me that people really needed power. But when you get them electricity, what happens? I'll tell you another interesting story. During one of my other rural India visits, I actually met a reincarnation of Nikolai Tesla. And I kid you not, this guy was stealing power through wireless transmission of electricity. It was the most impressive form of power theft I've ever seen. And I bet if some of these rural geniuses are put in our power sector, the country's power sector will be in a far better situation. <laughs> to give you some more perspective, India loses over $25 billion a year in the power sector, largely because of theft, pilferage, and non-payments. And a good chunk of these losses happen in rural India, where we still have 77 million households living off kerosene for their primary source of lighting. So when I look at the power sector today, it comes off as a grim reminder of what the telecom sector was about 15 years back, when even getting a landline connection was a business deal in itself. So I started Ground Power to change this. And I wanted to develop a solution that not only improves energy access, but also ensures that the Teslas and Edisons of our country are not constantly using their brains to become responsible for all the energy that we lose. So what we do is, we get to an off-grid village, and we set up what we call as a smart microgrid. We bring in solar power generation as well as a distribution infrastructure in the village itself, and then every single household is given a smart prepaid meter. This meter and the technology around it is at the heart of what we do, and it allows us to solve a whole bunch of challenges. The first problem that we address is that of payments. Now, in rural India, most households purchase their quota of wheat, rice, shampoo several times a week because they live off their daily wages. So we figured it'll be pretty cool if just as this villager purchases a five-rupee pack of Colgate, he's able to go to the vegetable vendor and say, can I have five rupees of power? And so that's what we did. We built a real-time wireless prepayment system that allows even that vegetable vendor to pre-purchase power from us at a bulk rate and then sell it to the consumer just as he would sell a handful of rice or wheat. The next problem we solve is that of identifying where our Teslas are, how are they tampering with the system, how much are they stealing, and how to stop them. So what happens is that these meters form a local wireless network in the village itself, and this network gives us a lot of very interesting data in real time. And then our, our computers on the grid, as well as on our servers, analyze this data, and we're able to pinpoint exactly where a particular meter or even a distribution line has been tampered, and then isolate that area from having power supply at all. But most of the rural villagers, uh, they, they essentially give us missed calls whenever they're uh, trying to reach us. Now, the reason that they do that is because they're extremely conscious about their monthly uh, cell phone bills. And so we thought of a way on how to bring this consciousness to power. If you look at that meter, this meter gives the people two pieces of information. It's, it tells them how much balance is pending, and it tells them whatever appliance that they're running on it for how long will it last. So, and we realized over time that it's just this piece of information that's required to make these guys energy efficiency experts. 
over the past one and a half years, we brought this system to about 17 villages in the country, and people paid. They did not steal. Whenever they tried to steal, the system reacted and stopped them. And more importantly, we had a lot of consumers who shifted to efficient appliances like LED lights that were more expensive from incandescent bulbs just because of the information that the meter gave them. And so we figured that if we're able to bring this technology on the existing Indian grid, the national grid, particularly in rural areas, it could create a paradigm shift in how we distribute and interact with power. And if with this technology we're able to save even 5% of the losses that our power sector faces, we'll be able to electrify all of rural India in just four years. And that's exactly what we're doing. Thank you.